Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in to our boardroom chat today. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Jesse. We're going to have another fun time studying the Word of God together Hallelujah. with everybody that's watching today. Before we get into our study, you told me right before we came on air here that um, we've got some great testimonies. Let's start off with a good testimony. A good testimony. Yeah, a good okay, well, they're all well, they're great. They're all good, but I'm just saying, uh, let's uh, I like read this one. I like this one from Columbia. It says... Uh, Bogota? Uh, or it just says well, Columbia? it does... Columbia, South America. It doesn't okay. say the city. Okay. And uh, I can't pronounce the name Augustin. No, uh, Agustin. A G U S. Let me just put my glass. I'm bringing it over closer. <laughs> Augustin. There's no U there, so. Yeah, there's a U inside of it. Afterwards. Okay, go anyway. ahead. Anyway, Augustin. <laughs> Excuse <laughs> us, Augustin, if we're messing up your name. <laughs> Augustin. Uh, dear Jesse and Kathy, I am a missionary pastor in Columbia. Your messages have greatly inspired me Amen. to believe God. I have been very disappointed, don't, no, excuse me, discouraged lately, but your boardroom meetings have put a new fuel in my heart. Praise the Lord. I love what you're doing. Never give up. Your programs are being watched in places that you have no idea of. Your God sent help. I'm hooking up and believing John 14 along with my Amen. wife, and our expectations have exploded. Love from Columbia, South America. You know what Augustine is talking about is um, I wrote a book called Your Everything Is Is Anything. I think it was a year or so ago. You know, if you knew Brother Kenneth Hagin, who's now in heaven, when you thought of Kenneth Hagin, you thought you thought of Mark 11, 23, and 24. You know, that's what he preached on for 60-something years. Well, I've adopted St. John chapter 14, verses 12, 13, 14 in my life, mm -hmm. like Brother Hagin did in Mark 11, 23, right. and 24. And what it is, and it, he said, go do the work that I do, and greater work than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. He said, if you ask anything, anything, uh, the verse 14 says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Right. Now, verse 13 said, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. Why? That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Then Jesus gets real radical if you ask anything in my name. Anything. That's what he's talking about. Right. And I'm excited about it. So I don't know much about depression or discouragement because I'm, I don't mean this arrogant. I'm so saturated with this word of God right. that it's like a shield. Kathy, right. and when, when depression, discouragement, and a lot of things happen in life. I mean, life's not easy. Mm -hmm. Just came through one of the biggest hurricanes here that hit the state of Louisiana. Yes. I it, mean, th those things are not fun in any way, shape, or form. Here, we were way to the east of, yeah. of it. Yeah, it we had a little west, wind and rain, but not like Lake Charles and Port Arthur and all those different places. But right. you know what? Great as he was in us, then he was in the world. That's right. And, and we've that, talked to several people amen. that are in that area already. We've been in touch with amen. many of our partners, and we've oh, been yeah. connecting and finding so many positive stories, how amen. God has protected them, or even if they had some damage, they have such hope and expectation and, you that know, God is going to help them recover all. I'm going to give a plug to this, but, you know, they've got some great people. We got a phone call. You, were told, you told me this yesterday from the, the company on MyPillow, you know, that we see on television all the time. Yes. And, the, and uh, uh, we had a, a real bad tragedies and hurricanes a few years back, and they sent uh, what? Fifteen hundred. Yeah, I think it was in twenty sixteen or some year like that. So maybe How many it was pillows did they three thousand pillows oh, that uh, we didn't have damage here, but they knew we were close enough to be able to, to get help the pillows. People. So I dispersed them to several churches, including you know, us and that thought, had outreaches. I thought and it then, would take so long to get rid of three thousand pillows. They Just went like, like that. that. I, all I need to do is make a few phone calls and, and people boom, received them, them and they were so blessed. And now the company has contacted us again and we've connected them already with a church so, right there in Lake Charles. I'm going to give them a plug. Those. If you need a pillow, Get it from my pillow. Actually, Jesse and I have one. We I got, yeah, I got my own. Praise I'm telling you, and, and I paid for it. It was a it. gift. No, but, I bought yours. Yeah, you paid for it. Yeah. But we used the, well, the first one we was used a the gift. code. What's the call it? The code. The, uh, whatever the code was. Whatever the code. Week. We used the code. <laughs> <laughs> we was saved money. Got one. Yeah, praise one, the Lord. Paid for one. Got one free. Yeah, that was a blessing of the Lord. So thank you, my pillow, for being yes, so courteous and kind. We appreciate and, uh, it. And give me another testimony, Kathy. Okay, great. This one is from uh, the top one here, Vienna. It's. Vienna, it's her name, I believe. Keep, love your real-life examples. Great message. You are as great as ever presenting the gospel. Keep doing what you're doing. That's what makes me continue being a partner. Very informative. Isn't that also a blessing? Blessings. Now, think about that, you know. Uh, I think this one came in from when you preached on Sunday at the church. I see. See, what happens is, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've been totally debt-free since 1982. So, you know, we receive partnership in our ministry all the time. So whatever you send to this ministry... None of it goes to retired debt. We've been debt-free because the Bible said in the book of Romans, uh, owe no man anything but to love him. So that's what we decided to do, sure. me and you. So what happens is a lot of people don't, most ministries don't do that. And I'm not, and I'm not being critical of them. I'm just telling you, uh, you, you get what you believe for. 
So we decided to believe for debt free. So like if you sent $20 into this ministry a month or something like that, uh, we wouldn't take $16 of it and have to pay some notes somewhere. And $4 of your money would go toward ministry outreach. So in other words, if you send 20, the whole 20 goes in the world evangelism. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm very proud of that because God's been so good and gracious. And I, 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 I'm saying all that. So I thank this person for saying that and how they said that's why they keep being a partner. Right. We're not lazy people here. We work. You know, we, we're reaching people. We're changing lives one soul at a time. We don't think of it as a conglomerate. And I don't mean this to sound arrogant. This is a very big ministry. I mean, it's worldwide mission, more than just social media. I mean, I'm on broadcast television all over the, all over the place and just everywhere. And God's been so good and gracious. But because of partners who do that, right. and this person said, that's why. That uh -huh. really blessed me. Because, you know, we, we when you send in a seed, we don't just say, well, well, we're just going to put this aside. No, we work that seed. We immediately begin to do what God says to do, and that's go in the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I want to talk about something today that I preached, I think, 37 years ago. That's when you was three. Is that correct? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise no. the Lord. And I was uh, six. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, 37 years ago, and I want to talk about a, 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 a day in the life of Christ. What is Jesus Christ doing Right now. Right. What's a typical day, right? What's a That's typical what day? Well, a lot of people, they, let me just say this. God sitting on the throne, uh, angels are not just putting grapes in his hands so he could eat some. God is a very busy God. He's sure. constantly, uh, he's a creator. He's constantly creating. In fact, the universe is still expanding because God is still creating. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't realize, especially in hard times, they don't realize what Jesus does every day for us. Number one, he's, he has four jobs. Four jobs. Number one, he's a high priest. Mm -hmm. he, he, he's a high priest for, for us. See, he, he made us kings and priests. Well, I mean, who's the kings that he's king over? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? He made us kings. He's a high priest. Number two, he's a mediator. Sometimes we mess up. Sometimes we strain fellowship. You see what I'm saying? So he's a high priest. Now, he's going to do this today, and he's doing it every day. A high priest to you, a mediator to you, an intercessor to you. Because sometimes we do some things again that we maybe shouldn't do, so he ever lives to make intercession. And then finally, he's an advocate, mm. which means he's a lawyer. In other words, he, he, any case that comes against us, he is our defense attorney, you could say, in a sense, and he's never lost a case. I want to talk about that today, mm. if that's all right. Do you remember when I preached that? I don't know I if you do. did. I do. And uh, some people call it the present-day ministry of Jesus. I call it a, a day in the life of Christ. And number one, and I, I want to go to the Hebrews chapter 8, and I want okay. to read this. And I love Hebrews. It's such a phenomenal book. And I'm going to start with verse 1. Now, of the things which we have spoken, chapter 8, verse 1. Now, of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister or a high priest of the sanctuary, glory to God, think about it, or of the true tabernacle, my Lord, mm -hmm. of which the Lord pitched and not man. So what does a high priest do? Well, in the old covenant, the high priest went in once a year in the, in, in, in the Ark of the Covenant. Then he could only go in there once a year, and he better be clean. Right. Because if he had sin in his life, he would die. He said, God and sin do not mix. But see, Jesus, because of the wonderful message of grace, he's a high priest. So what? number one, he takes our crude petitions and worship. And I'm going to read it like I wrote it. He takes our crude petitions and worship and make them beautiful to the Father in his name. Mm. Sometimes we pray wrong. You know what? You know what? Sometimes it takes a little while to get your, your prayer answered. This is kind of funny. It's true. I mean, you send a prayer up there, and, the Lord, and Jesus goes, "Oh, this ain't right. I got to fix this thing." You know, because it's a crude petition, and 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 and, and He makes them beautiful to the mm -hmm, Father. Mm -hmm. How many times you needed a high priest? Uh -huh. How many times I needed a high priest? How many times you need a high priest? He will do this today, and I mean, he he's been doing it now since he's went back to heaven. Yeah. He's a high priest, ever making. I mean, he's such a blessing. He has separated man from Satan's kingdom. Hmm. Think about that. Now, I'm going to say this. I really have a hard time sinning. The only person that can make me sin is right there. <laughs> <laughs> I give her a hard time. Right there. Yeah. Kathy, <laughs> Kathy can make me happier than anybody I know in this planet. But she can make me madder than anybody else. And that's my problem? Yes. I mean, I'm <laughs> Come on, agree with my me for once in my life. Huh? You need to own that yourself. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not taking it. I'm trying, people. Help me out here. Wait. <laughs> See, he has separated man from Satan's kingdom. You know kingdom. what? I think what you meant when you were talking about how Jesus fixes our prayers, I think that 
What, what I get out of that is that he really sees our heart. And just like right now, I know what your heart is. Yes. But it didn't come out of your mouth just the right way. <laughs> well, let so, me just say that. This is a crazy so. woman. Listen, listen, when I first married Catherine. Well, I want to finish she, my no, thought. No, no, I got it. I'm, I'm interrupting. Yeah, I know. <laughs> she knew one word to me. Yes. But something happened. She learned a word called no. Oh, Lord. So yeah, now I don't, I I, I don't get day. yes much often anymore. I just get a no quite a bit. Well, then it's good so you for need you. Prayer. Know. It's oh, good for Father, you. Help I told her in Jesus' time, name. I said, I'm not that young, stupid girl you married. You're, I said, I miss her. <laughs> I, said, I liked her a lot. I said, she's dead. She's never coming back. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. He has separated us from Satan's kingdom. <laughs> so why are you troubling or being troubled with sin? Hmm. When the Bible said, therefore, if any man be in Christ... Are you in Christ? I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. He, we're what? New creatures. Right. Now watch this. Old things. That's 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Old things are passed away. That's Why right. are you still playing around with old things if they're passed away? Mm. You see what I'm saying? But that's why Jesus knows people do that. That's why we need a high priest. Yes. See, and he has obtained eternal redemption. You're saved by grace. I love that. And carried his blood. Think about Mary Magdalene. She went to see him. First evangelist was a yeah, woman. That's right. He said, go tell my disciples and Peter that I'm and alive. Peter. And that woman took off down the road. But when she first saw him, she was not expecting to see him alive. Even though he said, right. I'll she, be back in three days. She thought he was the gardener. Right? And thought he was the gardener. The gospel says. When, right? And she didn't, where have you laid my master? And when he said her name, Mary she knew that boy. She goes, man, and she went to touch me. He said, don't touch me. Mm -hmm. You know why, Kathy? Because he had not yet ascended. If she would have touched him, he'd had to do it all over again. He went, and he, when he told her to go tell my disciples and Peter that I'm alive, she took off down the road. Jesus made a quick trip to heaven, poured his blood upon the holies of holies, declared man the righteousness of God, and came back. She Ooh, what a Jesus. She interrupted him. She actually shut down redemption for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Think about that because, I mean, I mean he said, I, I haven't poured out my blood well, yet. Well, he appeared on the mercy to her. Must, she, he must have Ooh. saw her desperation. Yes. In the same way when, God, when we are in a desperate situation, right. Jesus can appear to us and in a spiritual way, speak right. to our hearts and give us uplifting hope. So his number messages. one job for you is he's a high priest. high priest. And if you want to know the points on it, he takes our crude petitions in worship and makes them beautiful to the Father in his name. He is touched with the feeling of our infirmity. I didn't talk about that. Hmm. In other words, maybe, you, you, uh, maybe you're sick. Well, if he took your infirmity and bore your sickness, why do you have it? Hmm. So he's touched by it. What he wants to do is take it from you. Yes. You know, I, a lot of people get, uh, get mad at me when I say, I do not grieve. I mean, he, 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 he bore our grief and took our sorrow. So right. why should we grieve? They said, that's good for you. No, it's not. Grief will beat you and beat you, and Satan will use that to beat you up. And so if he bore your grief and took your sorrow, you shouldn't have it. So let's just say right now your spouse has went home to be with the Lord, and you're grieving. I understand you miss him. you, you got to miss him, but you shouldn't grieve. Now, don't get mad at me. Let me finish here. Because the high priest bore that grief. Right. And he also took that sorrow or took that infirmity. And I've said this so many times. Many of you watch me all the time. Have you ever saw me sad? Have you ever saw me sick? You ever saw me depressed or discouraged or despondent or broke or anyway, whatever the world says you should do? Not that I'm better than you or I have any more faith because that's not true. Mm -hmm. But what I do say, I might have a little more obedience. I understand Jesus' number one job now that he's ascended and sat at the right hand of the Father. He is a high priest for me and a high priest for you. What do that's you say right. about that? I agree with that, you know, and I just see Jesus as being so compassionate. Oh, he is. In fact, Jesus, the one scripture I was looking for, it, I couldn't quite go to it now, but I was reminded of a verse of scripture that talks about how when Jesus saw the, the multitudes, how they were like, with, like, how they were like sheep without a shepherd, he was yeah. moved with compassion. You know, when you said that, how many sheep today are without a shepherd? Mm -hmm. They may have a pastor, but they don't have a shepherd. You know what's my litmus test for a pastor? I do this. Come here, Kathy, close to me. I go, I smell them. They go, what are you doing that for? I said, if you don't have the smell of sheep on you, you're not a pastor. You're not a shepherd. Jesus had the smell of sheep on him, see? That's right. He left the 99 to go get one. Most people say, forget the one. Let's keep the 99. You see how reversed the church mm -hmm. world is thinking, you know? Because mm -hmm. they're just thinking numbers. Jesus is thinking individual. Now, that's a high priest. Now, that's his number one job. Now, we can go over this again. Number two job. I'm going through this kind of fast. His number two job is he's a mediator. 
Now, I love that word, a mediator. I want to go to Hebrews chapter 4, Kathy, and, uh, and I want to read verse, oh, uh, I believe it's verse uh, 16. Hebrews chapter 4. That's the last verse. Uh, very, Let that us chapter. therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I like the mm -hmm. verse above it. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity, but was in all points tempted like as we were, yet without sin. Uh, now, do you want to read that in Amplified? Amplified so, is so powerful get, in this Yeah, one. read that. Read 15 and 16. Actually, I'd like to read, for, start with 14. Okay, sounds it good. Says, now, in, remember, number one job is high priest. His second job is a mediator. You may need mediation today, if that's the right yeah, word. And we need to connect with him oh, yeah. as our read high this. priest. And that's why I want to start in verse 14 okay. in the Amplified Bible. Again, we're in Hebrews chapter 4. It says, Inasmuch then as we have a high priest who has already ascended and passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession of faith in him. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our Ooh. weaknesses and infirmities and liability to the assaults of temptation. Hallelujah. So he went through everything we would ever That's go right. through. But one who has been tempted in every respect as we are, yet without sinning. I love that. Verse 16, let us then fearlessly and confidently Ooh, like and that. boldly draw near to the throne mm. of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help. Oh, that's good. Listen to this part. In good time for every need, appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. Now, that's what a mediator uh, does. Number one, he's a high priest. Number two is a mediator. Have you needed a mediator? I know I have. Mm -hmm. And when I love it, people say, Brother Jesse, don't have no fear. Well, the scripture says fearlessly. Yes. I don't, will not allow my spirit, I will not allow my faith level to come down and, let, and, and where fear will fit. Mm. See, perfect love casted out all fear. Mm -hmm. And I, the Bible used the word cast out. It just don't go away. You got to grab it. And throw it out. I mean, you've got to cast it away from you. you yeah, see what it's I'm saying? warfare. You have yes, to it is. It is a warfare. So watch this. Fearlessly. And confidently. Faithfully. In every area. I'm confident because I can come boldly to the throne of grace. So when I go, I go, hello, Jesus. He say, hi, Jesse. Notice both our names starts with a J. <laughs> I kind of like that. So you understand why I, I stay happy. And because you know, I, I know it, God's working for me right now. Right now as I do this that's right. as a high priest and a mediator. I mean to cut that's, you off. That's, I just was being silly, though. Go ahead, be you silly. Know how you've said for years, notice both our names start with a J. Yes. That's his first name. But his last name, Christ, starts with a C. <laughs> that's true. But Christ <laughs> is his anointing. Well, it's Jesus still, is his name. We call him Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a blessing. So when you understand. I can really relate to him, though. And, yes. In more ways than just those initials because he's so compassionate. Every time I read about him oh, in the Bible, blessing. my heart just connects with his heart. And I, sure. I want to be more like him. Well, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Mm -hmm. Let me show you something. I was a mediator for my daughter Jody when she was about five, six years old. You know, Jody's uh, gonna be 49 years old, she don't look at it at all. And I have never told her no, no. And my granddaughter is now 12 and a half, who looks 15, which we don't like, but that's all right. And I haven't told her no. Now I remember one time I had been on the road I come back from preaching, and I guess you and Jody had an argument. Jody did something she wasn't supposed to do. I don't think that was five or six, because if you were on the road, you were, she was eight. Or eight, whatever. No, she, I mean, well, maybe really? so. Okay. I'm, I'm right. Anyway, to make a long story, how old is she? Jody was born in seven. Because I know what story you're telling, and five or six wouldn't have been appropriate. Well, yeah, we, we moved to 104 Hellier Street, remember, in 75. But you were on the road traveling as a minister is what you're talking about. Yes, okay. Well, anyway, watch this. So Kathy comes in there. She says, Jesse, Jody did such and such, and I thought, What's that got to do with me? <laughs> you know? She said, I want you to go in there and spank her. She said, she needs to spank it. Oh, Jesus. I did not want to do that. So I thought, how do I get out of this? I said, listen, listen, listen. And she said, you the man of the house, Jesse. I said, when did I become the man of the house? I'd like to know. <laughs> was it while I was out that you finally got that revelation? So I, I said, Jody. I needed reinforcement. <laughs> but she was mad. And, and Jody probably deserved it. That's not the issue. So I said, Jody, get in this room right now. So she comes in the room, man, and I close the door. And I had a belt in my hand. And Kathy's out there. But see, I, I, I'm a mediator. See, 
I'm doing what Jesus says here. Uh, I, I, I'm going to help her out. I said, now, Jody, and real quiet. I locked the door so Kathy wouldn't open it. I said, now, I want you to holler as loud as you can. I'm going to hit this bed with a belt. When I hit the bed with the belt, you go, ah! So, man, I hit the bed, and Jody go, ah! And we all laughing. Ah! And Kathy goes, don't hit her too hard. Wait a minute. <laughs> and I thought, I said, no. Nah. I said, don't say nothing. You understand? I must have hit the bed two or three times, something like that. Yeah. And it, but it satisfied Kathy, I guess. They, they, well, it, I don't remember telling you to use the belt. I just told you to go in there and discipline Well, how do you and spank you, somebody? Well, you must you have, don't go in there with a fist. I think you went in there with a plan. <laughs> So I had that it a would sound louder with yes, that Yes, I had. Because I, I don't want to do that. You know what uh, I'm saying? So a mediator, what does he do? He introduces, Jesus introduces the lost man to his father. Mm. Think about that. Write that down if you're taking notes. He introduces the unsaved man to God. So in other words, when Jody was born uh, I, uh, I, on October the 25th mm -hmm. at 12.06 a.m., uh, I, we stayed six weeks. She was born in Arlington. I never forget. I told. Uh, I said, "Let's go home." We flew home. Remember that? Me, you, and Jody. She was on an airplane at six weeks old, and I came and did something that Jesus did when you get saved as a mediator. I introduced. I had Jody in my hand. I said, "Hey, Dad, this is my daughter. This is your granddaughter. What do you think?" See, when you get saved. Jesus, you a babe in Christ. He picks you up and goes, Father, what do you think? What do you think? <laughs> and God said, he lived just like you. Praise <laughs> God. Think about that. That's a revelation there. He introduces the lost man to his heavenly father. Mm. And we were so happy to bring Jody home so your mother could see her and everybody else could see her. See, that's what a mediator does. He is a mediator for the sinner. In other words, you, you, a sin cannot enter into God's presence, but with a mediator. He shed his blood, so he puts a, 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 a I would call a, a veil, something that the sin cannot get through. And let me tell you something, it washes it all away. It just, just that doesn't cover sin. You know, some people think uh, forgiveness in his word, the atonement. The atonement means to cover. It's not in the, it's in the old King James, but it's not in the New Greek Testament because the word atonement means to cover. Jesus' blood don't cover it washes it washed away. Washed it away, never to be remembered again. So do you remember again. that time we flew home yeah, with her? I and, uh, and so we could introduce Jody to her family. So if you get born again right now, or if you've been born again, what happened as a baby Christian, Jesus picked you up, went to the father and said, what do you think? Look at this baby. And the father, you know, he, we made in his image and his likeness. He says, oh, he looks just like you. He looks just like me. Isn't that wonderful? This is just one day in the life of Christ, and he does mm -hmm. it every day. He's a high priest, and he ever liveth. Uh, he's a mediator. So in other words, my God, we, got, we are so protected. That's why we can come boldly to that throne of grace without petitions. Right. Boldly. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean snapping your finger. I ain't talking about that. So, but I'm talking about saying, Lord, you're mine, and I'm yours. Now, right. that's his second job. You know, that reminds me of a testimony that we go have here, if you don't mind me interrupting, go because this is a person who's standing and believing and needing that mediator, but they've been encouraged already. Maybe you're watching even today. It's a, from Crystal. It okay. says, I have been faithfully watching your Bible studies, Sunday worship, and the Southwest Believers Convention since I was furloughed. God has seen me through and miraculously made sure my insurance stayed active. Praise I'm God. starting back to work and will have to commute two hours each way. I'm believing for provision to travel and for a new vehicle. Amen. I know God will provide. He is my source. Every time I tune in, God speaks to me through your words. Uh, who's Thank this? you. Who is this? Crystal. Give me your hand. We're going to pray for Crystal right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Crystal needs a new vehicle. Crystal needs help. Lord, you are a high priest and you are a mediator. I, Lord, I ask Lord. you to bless her in the city, bless her in the field, bless her going in, and bless her going Thank out. You, and Lord, maybe a job closer. You could just be the, but you can do that right now. You said if two Thank of us agree, Lord. Lord, look, I'm holding Kathy's hand. She's one, I'm two. Crystal's three, God, and you four. Thank so I can you, hold Father. your hand like this, Father. I decree you, and Father. declare Crystal a new automobile, whatever she needs, so because she loves you, Lord, and she's receiving revelation from you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Crystal, when you get it, and I'm expecting you to get it quickly, write us off. What do you call it, Texas or whatever you call it, and send us a, a, a testimony. Maybe we can, once again, in one of our uh, boardroom chats here, we can talk about it and show people what, how good God is. 
So number one job is what? A high priest. High priest. Number two job. He's a mediator. Let me go over this again. Number one is a high priest. What does he do? He takes our crude petitions and worship and makes them beautiful to the Father in his name. He is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Mm -hmm. He has separated man from Satan's kingdom. This is as the high priest. And he's obtained eternal redemption and carried his blood. Mm -hmm. That's why when Mary came back, he said, you can touch him. And they all grabbed him, man, grabbed his feet because the blood had been poured out on the mercy seat. Right. Whoa, In mercy heaven. had been extended yeah. to all mankind. And God took that big veil that covered the holies of holies and ripped it, not from the bottom up, from the top, top to down. the bottom. And they and that say was, that thing yeah. was what? This Very thick. thick. Very thick. I now, how, how can you, I mean, I, I've read that in the Jewish thing. They said it was thick. How could you tear something like Even that? from the bottom, it would have been Ooh, hard, but from yeah. the top, or it was very tall. I mean, and it was just such a blessing. So that is his number one job. He is a high priest. Now, his number two job, he's a mediator. Mm -hmm. Let me, and and that, by, by, that's why you, you can come boldly to the throne of grace. He introduces, as a mediator, the unsaved man to God. He's a mediator for the sinner. And the reason why he is is St. John 14, 6. He says, I am the way, I am the truth. I'm the life. If Jesus is the way, you can't get lost. That's right. That's if right. he's the truth, the devil you cannot can't be deceived. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if he's the life, the devil can't kill, kill you. you. That's correct. <laughs> Hallelujah. See what I'm saying? I mean, Jesus is doing so much. This is just a typical day in the life of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. So you thought he was just sitting up there looking around and enjoying the place. No, he's about the Father's business, just like me and Kathy are about the Father's mm -hmm. business. So if he's a high priest, he's a mediator. Now, I really like this one. His third job. Right. He's an intercessor. I want you to go with me to Hebrews chapter 7. Okay. And, and I believe you can read it in the Amplified too. I want to read verse 25. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. I believe it says there. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Mm -hmm. Read that in the Amplified gap. It says, therefore he is able also to save to the uttermost, completely, perfectly, finally, and mm. for all time and eternity, those who come to God through him, since he is always living to make petition to God and intercede with him and intervene for Ooh. them, meaning me and you. He ever and lived to be an intercessor. Ever lives. Now, let's, let's ask the question. Why do we need an intercessor? You're born again. You're saved. Got the Bible in your hand. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Why? You know why? Why? <laughs> because of our unrenewed minds. Yeah. See, the Bible said, be not conformed to this world, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may know, not God, you may know that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. See, a lot of times, and the mind is the soul of man, the mind, the will, and emotion. It's mm -hmm. unrenewed. You see what I'm saying? So what happens is we, we say some dumb stuff, mm -hmm. or we do something we shouldn't do, so he intercedes for us. Because of our unrenewed minds. Number two, we strain sometimes our fellowship with the Father because of our, of, of our ignorance of His will. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes, what is the will of God? You know, so many people say, I don't know the will of God for me. You've heard me say it, Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, and the mm -hmm. last two chapters in the book of Revelation. That's the will of God for mankind. You see, between them four chapters, 1185 chapters a killing, stealing, and destroying by an arch enemy called Satan. But Jesus is coming back. We're going back to Genesis 1. We're going back to Genesis 2 and the last two chapters in the book of Revelation. And man's going to walk in the cool of the day with the Lord just like Adam and Eve did. That's right. That's back right. then. So and why? Just, go, go and ahead. until that time, mm -hmm. right here while we're here on the earth, you know, mm -hmm. we have the sweet by and by, but we got to talk about the nasty now and now. Sometimes right. it's pretty nasty. So we can have so some pie in the sky. We can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a poet. I didn't even know it. <laughs> but Jesus, even today, will help us to live in the same way as oh. we can even pray, Thy will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. Right. So this heavenly existence that we existence that we read about in Genesis chapter one and two that you just talked about, right. and in the back sure. to Revelation chapters, those are wonderful. But even today, even though the enemy's out there, mm -hmm. when we when we go to God and see that He is our intercessor, He can help us to to overcome the situations that we face Amen. every single day. Can I read another testimony? Yes, but before we do it, let me just say this. You know, people that don't believe in prosperity, you know what their problem is? Not a lack of faith. Not an abundance of unbelief, an unrenewed mind. Mm -hmm. Their mind's not renewed. So what happens, watch this, they attack part of the body of Christ. 
I mean, the Pharisee, the Sadducee, the Zealot, they call people, Jesus, people like that, heretics. Mm -hmm. That's an unrenewed mind. Think about that. Certainly God wouldn't bless us in the city, bless us in the field. He said it in Deuteronomy. If he said it in Deuteronomy, you know he's going to say it in Matthew. You know he's going to say it in Ephesians. You know he's going to say it in Revelations. You know, Revelation is the amazing thing about that book. The Bible said, he that readeth this book is blessed. blessed. If you just read the book, yeah. you're blessed just by reading it. So number one, and then I want you to, read, I want you to do that testimony. He, because of our unrenewed minds. See, people don't understand my joy. You know why? Not because I'm better than you. Forget about that. Because your mind's not renewed to joy. You only think happiness. Certain things happen make you happy. But see, when you have the joy of the Lord, everything can be going wrong, but nothing can destroy your joy because the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's right. Because your mind's renewed. You know in whom you have believed. Right. And you're persuaded. And then we strain our fellowship with the Father because of our ignorance of His will. What is His will? <laughs> So simple. His will be done where? On earth right. as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. He wants you living here like as if you'd be living in a mansion in heaven. No debt, no sickness, no disease. Listen, why do we have it here? Because of an unrenewed mind. We strain that. We strain, right. That's ignorance of his will. Go ahead and read that. I, I'm starting to preach here. You have to cut in on me. Well, before I read it, i got to preach a little bit. Okay, preach a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> no, but when you were saying all that about renewing your mind, I'm, I was reminded of a, one of my favorite phrases from Kenneth E. Hagan, how he preached this message. He often said that uh, we've been religiously brainwashed ah, yeah. instead of New Testament taught. And that's really what renewing your mind is. Amen. Instead of the ideas and things that we learn in our tradition or in our family, things that we grew up thinking that was true about God. Right. We need to find out what the Word of God says. Renew our mind to that exactly. Well, let, let me re I'm going to give you use as an example. If Satan tries to attach your body, the first thing you tell me, Jesse, by Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. That's right. Pray for me. Right. Or you'll pray for me, whatever. I mean, that doesn't mean the devil don't try to do things. Yeah. But when you have a renewed mind, you put up the shield of faith. Right, and when we get a bad report, and we've often told this to other people, you know, don't worry about what, don't worry, yeah. be af afraid of going to the doctor. That's right. Even if you get a ra bad report, you can change it with your faith. Amen. And that's what this testimony is all about. It's from Dawn. She says, I testify the Lord worked through several cancer diagnoses in my family. I am overcoming it now. My mom has overcome five skin cancers, and glory to God, my dad is one and a half years well from his stage four diagnosis. God is faithful. We are so grateful. Praise God. So they are attacking this attack with their faith, and they're getting a victory. Uh, Her, name Her name is Dawn? Her name is Dawn. Now, why is it stage four? Is She's overcoming it now. She's pushing. P pushing the light. Pushing the light. Well, what happens is it, whose report? Shall you believe? We're not denying the report of, of the doctors. We're not denying. They do, they're only looking at this thing from the physical standpoint of view and doing everything in their power to help you. Right. But see, so why don't you get the doctor on your side and Dr. Jesus on your side? <laughs> do it from the spiritual side and the physical That's side. That's right. That's in right. In every area. That's what I'm talking about. That's what it means to be an intercessor. Ever live it to make an intercessor. Interceding mm -hmm. for it. Because he knows sometimes there's a lot of things that our mind has not been renewed to. Right. And or we strain our fellowship. That's right. And I believe that Dawn is, is testimony is going to be full and complete. And she's seeing victory in her family. And we're standing with you as well. And by being an intercessor, no one can lay a charge against you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus is interceding. Every time the devil's trying to hit you, uh, Jesus just blocks him. And the intercede says, oh, my heavenly father, this is my boy. He, he loves the Lord. He may have made a mistake, but I've already washed it away. He's asked me to forgive me. He's already repented. And the devil just looks like the biggest idiot standing there. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's kind of like uh, when you understand, which it goes to the next job of him. He's an advocate. Oh, yeah. Now, there's four things. This, just, this is a typical day in the life of Jesus. Number one, he's a high priest. Number two, he's a mediator. And number three, he's an intercessor. And finally, number four, he's an advocate. Now, I preached this about 37 years ago. An advocate means a lawyer. Hmm. For example, and I, and I love this. I believe it was Keith Moore that said it. I may be wrong in that. And I've used it, Keith, and I was, it was really a wonderful revelation. You brought in the court. The Heavenly Father's the judge. Okay, you got Jesus as your advocate. And then your you got lawyer. Satan, right. who is trying to just destroy you. He's uh, the prosecutor. Yeah, he's the pro <laughs> He's doing everything he can. And, uh, and all of a sudden he says, uh, 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 judge, you need to do this. Judge, you need to do this. And Jesus stands up and says, I washed his sin away. He has no evidence against him whatsoever, Father. And so the, uh, the, the judge says, well, how do you plead? And Jesus said, 
Uh, we plead the blood. <laughs> we plead the blood. No, when you plead the blood, it is over. Case dismissed. Right. You see, right. that's what an advocate and a good lawyer does. Now, I want to go to the scripture to prove to you that he is an advocate. First John, Kathy. That's right before Second John. That'll help you out. Praise God. In the Amplified. First John, chapter 2. I love this. Verse 1. First John, my little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is perpetuation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen. That's Saint John, First John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Uh, would you read that in Amplified if you can? 1 and 2. Yes. Uh, First, Chapter 2. My little children, I write these things so that you may not violate God's law and sin. But if anyone should sin, we have an advocate, one who will intercede for us with the Father. It is Jesus Christ, the all-righteous, upright, just, who conforms to the Father's will in every purpose, thought, and action. And he, that same Jesus himself, is the propitiation, the atoning sacrifice Ooh, to God. for our sins, and not our for ours alone, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now, that is powerful. Do you notice that these four jobs interlink? They do. They do. I mean, it's just like this. They're like a puzzle. You know, life's like a puzzle. It's all in pieces until you begin to put it together. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? He's a high priest. He's a mediator. He's an intercessor. And he's, and he's an advocate. You yeah. know, I need to start preaching that again. They overlap. Preach that 30, yeah, they overlap and come together, which mm -hmm. means you're so protected. Hmm. You got the whole armor of God. You got the helmet, not the cap of salvation. You got a helmet, it's covering your whole face. Then you got a breastplate of righteousness. That's as close to your heart, you're righteous. The helmet yeah. covers not just your face, your head, yeah. so that your mind is right. protected. Know the enemy is oh. always sending bombarding thoughts to tell you Amen. that you'll never make it, especially when you get that bad report. He would want to overwhelm you with negative thoughts. But right. God's, the, that, that helmet of salvation is there to help oh. you. Because of salvation, of yeah, the, because of salvation, you have everything else Every, that belongs Well, the breastplate of righteousness. Mm -hmm. When you ain't righteous, yes, I am. Closest thing in my heart. My loins are girded about with truth. In other words, what holds me together is truth. Not a truth, not some truth, but the truth. Who is the truth? Jesus is not a truth or some truth. Right. He is the truth. Right. See what I'm saying? And then you've got a sword of the Spirit. Right. My God. Now, what you're talking about there, which we have some people may not have read the whole Bible, and they may not know you're talking about what we call the armor of God, which is found in Ephesians yeah. chapter 6. What a blessing. It's so powerful. God. And you got that shield of faith. Right. Now, what I do, and I like to tell people about that, is there are a lot of darts that hit your shield. But the problem with the Christianity sometimes, they carry the darts with the shield. Mm -hmm. That was when a dart hits my shield, I don't carry it around. I just knock it off. Right. That's just extra weight. You see, extra things. That I don't, I, that I, I shouldn't have to carry. Why? So when Satan, you're not this and not that, said, no, no. See, the difference between me and you, Satan, I have a high priest. I have a mediator. I have an intercessor, and I got a lawyer. You got nothing. You understand? You got nothing. <laughs> Just that simple. You throw him away. That's it. He's under your feet. So I like what the Italians say. He's a stone in my shoe. <laughs> you know, you just take the shoe out. <laughs> yeah, man, take the stone out and put your shoe back on. And you don't ask the devil to get under your feet. You command and you demand it because of the power of attorney to use the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, you didn't realize that in a typical day, Jesus is doing those four jobs. Think about that. He's going to introduce somebody to his father today. Yes. Ooh, what a blessing of God. Think about that. As a mediator, Lord, he was bad, but he ain't bad no more. Uh -huh. Wow, you think about that. So when you understand all these wonderful things, uh -huh. how can you, can I say it without sounding arrogant? How can you be sad? That, that, I mean, now when I hear bad news, you know, naturally I understand it. I, I'm affected by it. It's common sense. But I don't let it get in me. Right. Because it'd have to go through the armor of God to get in me. Mm -hmm. It'd have to go through a righteousness to mm -hmm. get in me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to allow that to happen. Because righteousness is a lot thicker than unrighteousness or <laughs> self-righteousness. That's right. That's I mean, right. it's covering the very vital being of who you are. You've been made the righteousness of God. Well, I don't feel righteous. Feeling ain't got anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. 
You know, it's like I've been married to Kathy 50 years, and sometimes I'm a little angry. I don't feel married, but I am. See and I'm, I'm sure Jesus is yeah. interceding for you when you're like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I had to open up that door. I was so thinking about, in. you know, when, before you got born again, I don't know who interceded for me. My but mama. even though Jesus, like you taught how Jesus, so beautifully how Jesus is our intercessor, I believe that he also leads and, and uh, the Holy Spirit helps us to intercede for others. He'll put an impression on us. Well, when you weren't saved, I was interceding for you in the well, night. My mom, remember, she said, the only way we're going to get to Jesse, we got to get to Kathy first. Right, right. So she was praying. Now, I just sense this in my spirit as we were doing this. <laughs> some of you need some finance. What do you need? You need a mediator. You need somebody to go out there and help you to bring that finance in. And then once the finance come in, somebody going to criticize you about it because it might be a hundredfold. You're going to need an intercessor. See, and Jesus is going to say, what are you criticizing it for? I gave that to him. Hmm. And if somebody want to try to, in the spirit, take you to court, Jesus said, I will defend you. Hmm. And the father will dismiss that case. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So you got to understand, uh, you may be going through some hard things. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now, the, uh, uh, the shadow of death, it's not death, it's the shadow of it. Mm -hmm. But you see, the Bible said God is light. I right. love that. In whom there's no darkness. No shadow so you don't even turning. have a shadow. Right. See what I'm saying? That's the power. Mm -hmm. So what are you believing for? Well, Brother Jesse, I, I need to pay my bills. Okay, good. I've said this so many times. He didn't ask you to pay for them, he asked you to believe for them. Now, if, since you said they're your bills, then you, you're held responsible for your bills because that's what you said. Right? So now, instead of just trying to pay it, believe it, let God bring in what you need to take care of those bills. But please, let me help you when you're praying for finance. Don't just pray, <laughs> oh, Lord, if I can just get, if I get everything paid for. Well, you, you, you got to have some more money to eat. You got to have some money for groceries. You got to, you see, some people say, oh, if you could just pay my light bill, if you could just do that. You see, and then they get, and sure enough, God does it. He'll do it according to your word. But you're not, you have to pray and believe for more than enough. You got to understand something about God. He never just meets a need. He always goes over it. Yes. More than enough. The El Shaddai, God that's more, that's one of his names. That's a side of him, mm -hmm. which means he just loves to bless. Yes. If you let him bless you. That's but true. you can stop him. Right. I like Kathy's statement every time I want to buy something. And if it's a little expensive or something like that, you know, Kathy, is not, she's not a, a free person just buy stuff because it's there. She'll look at me and she said, that's expensive. I said, yeah. I said, but it sure would look good. Do you want me to have it? She says that all the time. I said that the other day. I said, for her birthday, and I said, yes, that's what I live for. You see what I'm saying? And it's God sometimes pushing you to Stretch. believe for yeah, something believe so. so he can give it to you. He's not withholding, so he said, let's just see how much they can take the pain and the suffering. Mm. You know, the church was preach that junk. Mm -hmm. that's, that's wrong thinking. Right. That's an unrenewed mind. That's religiously brainwashed. Yeah, that's right. That's why we need an intercessor. Yes. So I want to pray for you today before we go off. I hope you enjoyed this today. Man, I think I'm going to go back and study this thing out for myself. Can I read again. just a few more little oh, quick yeah, testimonies? That's what's good uh, about social media. We can go as long as we want. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Well, I'm going to read just a few quick ones. This one's from Myra. She says, watching from Scotland. Scotland. Love and <laughs> <laughs> blessings to you both. <laughs> I like uh, to say it the way the squats, the squats are not very emotional, you know. Go ahead. All right, all right. AJ says, love these boardroom chats. They're my favorite. And then Christine says, blessings from New Zealand. Really enjoying being tuned in to you both. So good, refreshing, and encouraging with lots of humor. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Okay, what the person from Scotland said? Scotland? Scotland, yeah. <laughs> I thought you meant that. Okay. okay. Myra says, watching from Scotland, love and blessings to you both. Basically I, sending us. Well, you know, I, I have to say, maybe I shouldn't say it, but I'm going to say it. I've been to the United Kingdom a lot, and I love England, and I love Wales. I, I, I like them all, but it's just something about Scotland. Ireland, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, I tell you what, I, I've been to Edinburgh. I've been to Glasgow. We have a dear friend that pastors there in oh. Edinburgh, Sherry. Sherry Haddon. Haddon, yes. The, Her the, husband's in heaven, and she's uh, continuing the work Peter, on there. We've been there many times. Peter Haddon Amazing. was one of the finest men I think I ever met in yeah. my entire life. Right. And we, uh, 
we were all uh, we were married on the same the day. The very same anniversary day. <laughs> June the sixth, nineteen seventy. Right? Yeah, June the sixth, nineteen seventy. That's right. And it was just such a blessing. So Sherry, if you're watching this, hallelujah, uh, we love you. And Peter, I know you're already here, and they said, how you doing, man? <laughs> Praise God. Peter said, have what a wonderful man. Mm -hmm. What a blessing of the Lord. Can we pray for you right now? Yes, Because, Lord. you know, in this typical day of Jesus' life, you may need a high priest, which I know you will, or a mediator, or an intercessor, or an advocate. So, right. Kathy? That's right. Father, I thank you today. Thank you, Lord. I ask you to bring all these things that we <clears throat> talked about today to come to pass. Yes. I decree it and declare it from the top of their heads to the soles of their thank feet. Thank you, Lord. I want them blessed, Lord, spiritually, mm -hmm. physically, financially. I know you'll supply all they need, but I go above the need, and I ask you to give them their desires and their wants, because you said yes, Lord. if they delight themselves, therefore, in the Lord. You yes. would give them the desires of their Thank heart. You, then they could be like the psalmist David. The Lord's my shepherd. I shall not want. Yes, Lord. I pray that today. We pray it, Lord. I call it done. We agree. In Jesus' name in Jesus we pray. Name. Amen and amen. Before we go off, I want to thank all my partners who helped me do this. We, you know, I'm back on the road again, preaching all over the place, but I'm not stopping any of this. The Lord just give me enough energy. I just do it all. We just, mm -hmm. do, it's an effectual door that's been opened up to me. That's right. Paul said that when he was at Ephesus, and he said, "Man, I'm not staying here. This, this I mean, I'm not going to leave this place because this is going to open up Asia." Right. It's going to be Asia Minor. It was called Asia Minor. He's going to make it Asia Major when he, when he finished it, see? So I want to thank all you that sow seed into this ministry, you that bless us financially. My Lord, 100% of it goes into world evangelism. You know it, and I know it. But there may be people watching today that doesn't know that. And, 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 and find one of my partners, if you know someone, and they'll tell you that we are people of integrity. And if you'd like to sow a seed, you can there's all kind of ways, all kind of platforms that you can text to give, PayPal, I don't know, uh, what all JDM.org, hit the donate button. Yeah. But if you don't, don't worry about it. I felt led of the Lord to say that. And to all our partners, thank you that we were able to do this today. So That's until right. next time, this is Jesse and, what's your name, Mama? <laughs> this is Jesse and Kathy saying we love you. We'll see you soon. Bye God bye. bless. Bye-bye.